So what if improving your free motion quilting were as easy as ABC? Well, I think that it can be. Let me show you how. Hi, I'm Kelly and welcome back to my sewing room. Today I have a skill builder for you to improve your free motion quilting. Whether you're a beginner or a little more experienced with free motion quilting, I think you can learn something from today's video. So this is actually based off a presentation I did for my machine quilting guild a little over a year ago. The premise is, if you can write your ABCs, then you have the skills needed to improve your free motion quilting. And today we're going to start off with the letter E. And of course, a cursive E is just a simple loop. So let's get started warming up on a quilt sandwich. Okay, so I have a little practice sandwich here, and we're going to use that to just warm up and practice our E's. Now, anytime you're going to start free motion quilting, whether you are experienced with the design or it's something new, it's always a good idea to practice on a little sample piece and kind of get yourself warmed up before you would start quilting on your project. So I'm going to bring my bottom thread up and put my needle in the down position, hold on to my thread tails, and I'm just going to start quilting some ease. And it's always good to reposition your hands. I should have repositioned one E sooner, but here we go. And I think sometimes we have a tendency to go very slow with our machine when we're starting something new. And what happens with that when we go really, oops, I can't even go slow. Okay, let's try again. When we go really slow, what you can see happens is, let's take a closer look here. What you can see happens, our stitches are very big and they don't give us a very smooth look to our E. So actually going a little bit faster with your machine, you don't have to speed up your hands per se, but going faster with your machine can help to get some smoother looking ease. And then the other thing that's happened is I've gone uphill and downhill a little bit. So one way to correct that would be to get a ruler, which I've got here. And I'm just gonna mark off with a fabric pen or whatever you've got, uh, some guidelines. And you can make these the size of the area that you are eventually going to be filling in. So I've done an inch. And now I have some guidelines of where I should be quilting. But you can see having a defined space to fill in can be helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and practice another line or two, and then we'll get started on our finished project. And to come back, I'm going to do some up down, upside down ease. Now that we've warmed up on this practice piece, we can move on to a real project. So this is a little table topper. It's actually from my UFO pile. And I thought this would be a fun project to practice the ease on. And so my plan is to put some ease in these um, burgundy squares. Um, I think putting like three E's, a small one, a big one, and then a small one would really look nice for this project. And then I have some E's planned for the borders. So let's get started. Okay, so I have this Superior Threads twisted 
And I just think the uh, color is going to look really nice on these blocks. And I'm going to start in this block down here in the corner. And again, I'm going to quilt a small E, a larger E to come up to this tip, and then a smaller E. So there's going to be three E's per block. I'll take a few locking stitches. And then my first E. I think I started my first D a little bit too soon, but that's okay. And my second E. And then a few locking stitches. And for this project, I'm just going to use the scissors on my machine. And then I'll snip these threads on top. So our next one, we will be able to do our first block, but then sneak over into our second block to quilt in there. So this time I'll take a few locking stitches and then I'm gonna travel over a little bit to start my first E. And then I'll sneak over, traveling a bit, first E, second E that's bigger, and then the third one, and then a few locking stitches. Okay, so that's where we're at right now. And for this next row, I will be able to do three blocks in a row. Okay, so I'm going to work my way up the rest of these blocks. Okay, so now with our blocks done, I want to start quilting the borders. And so like we did in our practice, I think I want to quilt some ease going um, along the edge of this inside of the border and I want to quilt some going along the outside of the border so that the um, curves curve into the center. So just like with our penmanship what I'm going to need is a reference line down the middle so I know how far to come up with each E and I also need to keep in mind that I need my quarter inch seam allowance in here. So what I'm going to do is get some painters tape and I will use that to mark off my quarter inch seam and then I have some chalk. Um, you could use a chalk pencil or any kind of marking tool that you have to mark my center line. And especially if you're a beginner, this can be really um, helpful to just have some guidelines of what space you want to quilt in. As you get more experience with quilting and with a particular design, then you can usually estimate um, about where it's going to be unless you really want precision. So it's kind of depends on the project, depends on your familiarity with the design, um, a couple of different things like that. So let me go ahead and mark this off and then we'll come back here and I'll show you the thread we're going to use to quilt this. So you can see here I have two sides marked and I just went ahead and did two so that I can reuse my tape on the other side if I want to and also so my chalk doesn't rub off. With chalk you don't want to mark too much because as you handle the quilt it can rub off. So what we're going to do is get our thread set up and then start quilting and we will quilt our ease on each side of this white line. The thread we will be using is this goldish yellow. Again, this is a twisted thread from Superior Threads and I think it'll add a nice little shine to this fabric. And as I'm quilting along, I'm going to be mindful not to rub too much on this chalk line so that it'll still be there when I want to come back and quilt the other side of these ease. So here we go. So 
So a good place to stop and reposition your hands is at the very bottom of an E. Um, if you try and stop up at the top, you can lose some of the smoothness. So that's why I will stop down here to reposition. I'm going to sneak along the edge here. And then if you want to stay in the direction you're going, we can turn our quilt around and quilt back the other way. If you are feeling adventuresome, then you can leave this just how it is and we will quilt upside down ease. And I am using my previous stitching as a guide so that I can match the top ease with the bottom ease. You don't have to, but it's just something that can give you a good guideline if you want. And it looks like what I should have done is taped off and marked this side so that I could just do a continuous line. And you can see how much this chalk line rubbed off already. And then all you need to do is just brush it with your fingers a little bit more, or you can get a microfiber cloth and that'll wipe off very easily. So let me mark up the other sides and get them quilted. Okay, now that we've finished that project, all I have to do is put the binding on. But I wanna show you one other way you can use ease and build on what you already know. So we've practiced our ease in a line, just as if we were writing cursive, and perhaps we've even practiced making them upside down. So now let's combine that and I'll show you how learning your ease and practicing that foundation piece will help you make wishbones. Back to our practice quilt here. Let's talk about how to quilt a wishbone. So what I've done is I have marked a dotted line down the center and we're going to use that to help us stay on track for our wishbones. So I'm actually going to use the center here as my starting point. And to quilt my first wishbone, I'm going to make my letter E. And then to continue the design of the wishbone, I'm going to dip down below this dotted line and I almost want to travel at like a 45 degree angle down below and then make my upside down E. And then I've reached the center line of my space here. So that means I'm gonna to transition to my next E. And I wanna continue along this 45 degree angle to come up and make my next E. And a way to keep a wishbone on track is to keep this line and this line at about the same angle. So right now I'm doing 45 degrees. So if you wanna squish these closer together, it'll change up the angle of this line but you just want the line to be consistent from this side to this side. So again, we're traveling back down at a 45 degree angle, making our upside down E and coming back to the center line. All right, so let's get moved over to the sewing machine and we will quilt some of this out. Okay, we're back at the machine and I've put my needle down right where we left off drawing and we're gonna start from there. So again, I'm in the middle of where my defined space that I want to fill is. I'm going to take a few locking stitches and then I'm going to travel up, continuing along the same line 
up at the 45 degree angle till I get above the dotted line and then I can start making my right side up E. So there's my right side up E. I'm back at the middle line. I'm going to travel down at that 45 degree angle and make my upside down E. Back at the middle line, traveling up at the 45 degree angle, make my E and back to the middle line. Traveling back at that 45 degree angle, making my upside down E and I'm back at the center line. So now if you want to vary this wishbone design, now that you're familiar with the path that it takes, you can spread it out or narrow it together by changing the angle of these lines. So if we want to make them closer together, or perhaps further apart, That's how we accomplish it. So next up, I have some leftover strips of fabric that I've pieced together, and I can make a simple table topper out of this, but it'll be a good way to show you how you can make wishbones. This could represent a border, a sashing, part of a block, or even some negative background space that you've defined an area that you wanna fill with wishbones. Okay, so for this first green strip, I'm gonna fill the entire space with wishbones. And when I need to reposition my hands, the best place to stop is at the bottom of the E where it crosses over itself. Your starts and stops will be least conspicuous there. Now this is a pretty big space to be filling with wishbones. The finished size of this green strip is three inches. So for my next strip, let me show you how I'm going to reduce the space where I want to fill the wishbones. So filling in between these straight lines with wishbones makes it a little bit more of a manageable size to quilt. Again, stopping to reposition my hands, I'm going to stop at the bottom of the E. And then in this light blue strip, I've divided it up again using some straight lines. So in one section, I'm going to quilt the wishbones closer together. And in the final section, I'm going to quilt them a little bit further apart. So let's take a look at our final pieces. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you feel inspired to go quilt some of your projects. And I'll be back next week when we continue thread painting our snow. See you then! And here's just a sneak peek at a practice sample I'm putting together to demonstrate the next letter in our alphabet, because we're going to continue on with using our alphabet to learn some more free motion quilting. And the next letter we have coming up is the letter L. So look for that in an upcoming video.